Okay. So everyone should see my desktop, um, and you should see Zybooks. Now, one of the things that um, I do try and do during these live coding sessions is answer your questions. If you have a question, post it down in the chat. It'll show up, and I will answer it or just unmute your microphone, stop me, ask a question. Um, I will try and review the lab. Uh, for this particular module, we're going to go through the solution for lab, which is it, um, 2.12, because there are things that you need from module 3 to complete this. So I will go through, and we will actually work through that solution together. Um, usually takes about an hour. Sometimes I go over. Um, you're free to drop off when you want, you're free to come back, you know, if you want. So, um, does anybody have any questions before we start? Okay. So, tonight we're looking at data types and strings. So, last week, um, if you were able to look at any of the previous Module 1 videos, they talked about variables and expressions. So tonight, we're looking at the different data types that Python provides and what to do with them. Um, and there are basically four data types. There's string, integer, float, and Boolean. The string is what we're going to look at first, and a string is just that. It's a sequence of characters. Now. From Python's perspective, a character can be not just A through Z or one, you know, zero through nine. It can also be a space. It can also be a tab. So what we think of as characters needs to expand when we're talking about Python. And we'll go through that in a little bit. A string is the first time we're really introduced to the concept of a sequence, or as I will also call it, a list. Because that's all a string is. A string is simply a list of characters in order. And, and it's just like it is in English. When you spell the word and, A-N-D, they, they create the word and. If you have the same three letters, and you put the D in front, so you D-A-N, that means Dan, which doesn't mean and because it's a different sequence. So there is an order to the sequence of numbers that create meaning. Same exact thing happens in Python. Okay, we create an order. That order has meaning, and it's considered a string in Python. Now, because it's a list, we can access things. We can get at individual pieces of the string. So we can get at the letter A from the string because it's the first letter. I can get the second letter, which is N, or the third letter, which is D. Now, if we're looking at um, what's on the screen right now, they're talking about string indexing. So Every position in a sequence or in a list in Python has a corresponding index number. You don't have to do anything. You get it because it's a list. It's oftentimes confusing for students because the first index in the list is always zero. So even if, as you look at this example here, you're looking at the word Trish with a space, the index for the first character is going to be 0. The index for the second character is going to be 1. So it's always, and I like to think about it, it's always a minus 1. So if I'm saying it's the first character, my index is going to be 0. And it's something that does have a habit of tripping up students. So let me create a new uh, Python file here. And by the way, this is PyCharm. 
So PyCharm is the integrated development environment that you're going to be using for class. You're going to need it when you do some of your assignments and when you do your final project. And I try and use it because I think it's a good tool. And it's also a good way to show you how to use parts of the tool that I find make it easier to program. These are things that I use in my daily life. So what I did was I just created a Python program, a Python file called Simple String, because I'm just going to play with some strings here. Now I have to add my configuration, because I don't have one yet. And I'm going to make it a Python configuration, and I'm going to tell it where the script is, and it's simple string, and I've got a uh, Python interpreter already set up, and then I'm going to start typing something. Um, so now you'll see this configure Python interpreter. For some reason, I don't have mine set up exactly right here at home. So I just have to tell it what interpreter to use. So now I'm fine. That goes away. So what did I just do? I just created a variable called my underscore stir. We know it's a variable because it's on the left-hand side of a single equal sign. And then I have quotes. This is a simple string. That's all it is. It's just a, a, a sequence of letters in between quotes. Now, what happens if I don't have the quotes? Let's just get rid of the quotes. In PyCharm, you'll start to see all this red underlining and the characters changing colors. That's PyCharm's way of saying there's a problem here. Because a string in Python has to be in quotes. It either has to be in double quotes or it has to be in single quotes. But it has to be in quotes. So I was talking about indexing. So let's just take a look at each of the different piece parts for my stir. So how do I get to the first in the first character of the value of my stir? Well, I do it by using the variable name and giving it an index value. Now you'll notice that I used the square brackets. The square brackets indicate to Python that you have a list and that inside those square brackets you're going to tell them what index value there is for the list. Now putting my stir of zero here doesn't do much of anything. So let's just print it. And now I'm going to run it. And what I'm going to see in the interpreter is T. So let's just continue this a little bit. Just going to do a few more. Not going to do the whole thing. One, two, whoops, two, three, four, and five. Where am I? So if I run this again, you'll see THIS space I. And that corresponds to the first six characters in the string sequence. So let's go back here, and we're going to keep on going. Length and indexing. Well, we just talked about indexing, but then there's this handy function called len, L-E-N. Len gives us the length of a string. It gives us the total number of characters. So if I want to know how many characters are in my stir, I can say print len my stir. And it will give me the number of characters in my stir. And you'll see that there are 23, because that's the new line that it just printed out. So that's what len will do. Len will give you the characters. Now, why is this important? Well, because Next, um, not next week, but in two weeks, you're going to be needing to do loops. And sometimes you're going to need to know the number of things in a sequence to loop over that sequence. So len is very important. I use it quite often. 
Um, let's see. Does anybody have any questions? Just checking. No. Okay. Ah, concatenating strings. You can add strings together to make other strings. That's what concatenating strings means. And there's a couple ways to do it. Right here, they're just talking about general concatenation. Most people I know use string uh, formatters, and we'll get to that in a minute. So where they're introducing us now to the concept of a list, and that's because you actually need it for 2.12. Um, a list is just a container. So a string is a special kind of list. So now we're looking at generic lists. And this is just a small introduction. In a couple weeks, you're going to go deep diving into lists and dictionaries. But a list is just a container of things. Okay? It can be a container of letters, like a string, or characters, like a string is. It can be a container of um, numbers. It can be a container of numbers and letters. It can be a container of other lists. A list can contain anything you need it to contain. Um, and it works on the same principle as we saw from um, the, the, the string. You simply have an index and you get to an element in a list by its index. So if I wanted to create a simple list, I could just say no quote here because it's just a list. I'm going to say Lisa 49 and 10. So you notice I have three different data types in this list. I have a string, I have a number, and I have a float. Now, but you'll also see that I created oh, a list. list. Sorry, does Sorry. everybody hear me on the uh, no, I can't hear you. Can't hear you. Okay. Okay. Um, I just turned everyone on mute. Um, put it into the chat if you're having a problem because I was getting feedback. So you'll notice a few similarities and a few differences. The first difference when you're creating a list as opposed to the string is the entire thing is not in quotes. Let me make that a little clearer. So here when I created the string, Everything was in quotes. You have to start with a quote and end with a quote. It has to be balanced. The list doesn't. The list can be, um, it has to start with an open square bracket, so a left square bracket, and has to end with a closing right square bracket. Anything in between those two is a list. And the elements have to be separated with commas. So let me create some issues here. Let me, well, let's run this. I'm just going to print the list. And for right now, I'm going to comment out these, just so we don't have to deal with them real quick. And I'm going to. First of all, I'm going to print my list, and we'll see what happens. So I print my list, and you'll see it just like that, Lisa 49 and 10. Now I want to print an element in the list. So it's just going to be like I did with the string. I'm going to say the variable name, which is my list, and I'm going to give it an index value. Now, in my case, I'll just start with index of 1. And when I print that out, it will be 49. So let's think about this for a minute. I've got 0, 1, and 2. What if I said I want to print my list, len of my list? So I'm using that great length function. It's going to tell me how long it is. 
because I think at this point that I want to print the last element in the list. So logically, I think length, so that's the last element in the list. Well, when I do that, I get an error message. And this error message says index error, last index out of range. So this is one of those things where we have to remember that the first index value is zero. So if there are three elements in my list, my last index value will be two. So this will never work. However, I can always do len my list minus one for the index number. And when I do that, the error goes away and I get the last element. It's a common mistake made by a lot of students when they're using this the first time. They look at len and they think it's the length. It is the length, but it doesn't get you to the last index. When you're dealing with the last index of a list, be it a list like my list or a string like my stir, you always have to have the length minus one. So let's go back and take a look. And then let's see. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. Sorry about that. Adding or removing list elements. So differences between a list and a string. A list, you can take elements out, add them back in. You can change the length of a list. That kind of activity allows you to mutate the list. A string is a special form of a list, and you cannot mutate it. A string is immutable. Once you have created a string in Python, that string stays exactly like it is. You can't add anything. You can't take anything away. You can create a new string from it. There are all kinds of functions to create a new string from an existing string but you can't actually change the original string. So when we're talking here about adding and removing list elements, um, they don't apply to strings. There are different functions for strings that we'll see in a bit. So if I want to add an element to my list, I can simply say my list dot because I'm about to call a function. A list is a class in Python. Because it's a class, it has specific functions that you can run on a variable of that class. So that's why in this case, I'm saying my list dot, because the dot says, give me all the functions associated with a list class. I'm going to say append, and then I'm going to say, um, Millie, which is my dog's name. Now, the interesting thing here is I'm going to use this same print function to see what happens. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm going to print my list, and we'll just debug this. In case you haven't seen how to use the debugger, the debugger is a handy-dandy tool, and I use it all the time. So I'm going to be able to step through the debugger. So this little red dot is a breakpoint. It says stop here to PyCharm. So I am stopping here. So I'm, they're calling it suspending the thread because I want to see what's happening. So it's already done line one and line three. It skipped over all of these lines because I commented them out. And now I want to see what's going to happen. There's a few things you can look at on PyCharm. First of all, when I run the debugger, I get a debugger tab. That debugger tab is different from the console tab. This is what's happening in the console tab. This is what's happening in the debugger tab. Now, something that is very useful in this class is the variables and what their current value is, because my list may change values. My stir won't but my list can. So I am here and I want to step over this line of code, which will force Python to execute the line. So I'm stepping over, I go into console, and it prints the list. 
And then I'm going to have it step over again, so it's going to print the last element in the list, just like it did before we get 10. Here's where the change comes in. I am now appending the word Millie to my list. So you will see here that my list changed. Sorry, I shouldn't have done that. My list changed. My list is now has got one extra element called Millie. I step over again. I go to the console. And this exact same line of code now gives me Millie. And that's because I've, I've changed the list, but I asked the same question. Okay? I added Millie to the list, and then I said, okay, give me the last element in the list. And because I asked it using len to say, give me the length, subtract one because everything starts with zero, it gave me Millie. So that is how you append, and that is how you mutate or uh, a list. It's how you modify a list. You can append. You can remove. You, there's a couple different ways. You can pop, which takes the first element off the list. You can remove an element by its value. Um, so this is just the mylist.remove, mylist.pop, and there are a whole host of other things. So if I go out here, W3Schools is very good. Python.org has great documentation. This is all of the stuff you can do to a list. Okay? You can clear it, you can look at the indexes, you can reverse it, you can copy it, you can append to it, you can insert. So if I wanted to insert something between the first element and the second element, I can do that. You can do a lot of stuff. I know we concentrate on Zybooks in this class, and for me and my students, because I can't answer for another professor, don't be afraid to go out and look online and see if there's something better that you can learn. If you're curious, go for it. If you have a question and you're curious, ask me. I will get back to you. I personally encourage my students to go out beyond the bounds of the class, because that's what you have to do in real life. Um, you have to go out and you have to figure things out maybe in a little different way. Zybooks is great. Use Zybooks. But if you're in my class and you want to try something or you've seen something on the docs.python.org, please ask. It's also a great reference if you're trying to understand things and you're having a little bit of problems. So those are all the things that, and you don't have to do anything for that. Python just gives you that. It's one of the nice things about Python. Um, so let's see. I want to make sure I have time to get to the challenges that I want to do. Uh, tuples. Okay, dictionary. Dictionary is another type of collection. And again, this is just a short introduction. A dictionary is different from a list because it does not have an index. It has a key. Dictionaries are made up of key value pairs. So I'm going to create a new file here. I'm going to say new file, simple dictionary. Whoops. Don't know what I did there. File, new file, no. File, new, Python file. I can do this eventually. Uh, simple dictionary. I want to create a dictionary. A dictionary is really good if you want to associate two pieces of information together. If there is a meaning that you want to give to a piece of data. This is, you're, you're relating them. And dictionaries are actually the basis of a form of databases called NoSQL. If you're interested in database architectures, there's SQL and NoSQL. You can go out and look them up, but dictionaries are the basis for the alternative, the non-standard things like MongoDB. Anyway, uh, back on topic. 
I'm going to create a dictionary called MyDict, and I'm going to start with curly braces. So that's the first difference you see. When you're creating a list, you have the square brackets. When you're creating a dictionary, you have curly braces. Now I need to provide a key value pair. So my key, in this case, is going to be name. I'm going to put a colon. Whoops, sorry. I'm going to put a colon, and my name is Lisa. Now I'm going to put a comma, and I'm going to put age, if I can type. And I'm going to put 29 a long time ago. And then I'm going to put, uh, I don't know, amount, and again, colon, and we'll put our happy 10 there. So you will see here that I have created a variable called my dict. We know it's a variable because it's on the left-hand side of a single equal sign. I have started with curly braces, and I have added name value pairs. That's what this colon does. This says the value of Lisa is associated with the key of name. The value of 29 is associated with the key age. The value of 10 is associated with the key amount. Remember there are no index values here. There are only key value pairs. So what can I do with the dictionary? Well I can print it like I did before. So let me edit my configuration real quick. Pick this guy. And I'm just going to print it. And you will see just what I, you see up on the screen. But what else can I do? How do I get to an element in a dictionary? Well, I can use the key to get to the value. So I'm going to print my dict and then I'm going to give it the string name. What this is telling Python is it's saying, given that I have this variable and I know it's a dictionary, give me the value associated with the key name. So this name is the same as this name and this action will get me the value Lisa. And that happens for every one of the other values. And, and with dictionaries, there's lots of stuff you can do. You can add things to dictionaries. You can get all the keys from dictionaries. You can do a whole lot of things. I'm not spending a whole lot of time here on this because this is just our introduction to dictionaries. There are going to be, we're going to have an entire module on lists and dictionaries. This is just your introduction. introduction. To it. I can change an element value from the dictionary. So I just printed my name. Now I'm going to change the value of my name by using that key, because that key is getting me here. So normally it would be Lisa, but now I'm going to change it to Millie. And if I do this same line again, all I'm doing is copying it, and I run it, I have changed Lisa to Millie in the dictionary. Let's do that in the debugger so you can actually see it happening. So I've stopped on line three. I'm going to step over, and it's just going to print the dictionary. You can see that in the console. I'm going to step over again. We still see this is, you know, name Lisa, age 29, amount 10. Now I'm going to step over on line 5 because this blue is where I'm currently, that's the current line of execution. So I step over and you'll notice that name changed to Millie. Lisa's gone away now forever, but we have Millie. And then we're simply going to print it. So that's what happens when I use this syntax, I can change a value within the dictionary. I can also append elements to a dictionary. I can remove elements from a dictionary. 
And again, I can't type tonight, sorry. I can go back to my data structures. Oh, those are lists. Stacks, there's a dictionary here somewhere. Dictionary, same page as before. It just goes through and it gives you an explanation of what a dictionary is, different looping techniques you can use. And by the way, if you're curious how to loop over a dictionary, because let's say you have that in a lab in the dictionary chapter, this gives you some very good examples of how to do that. And hopefully when I do the dictionary chapter, we'll look at that. So common data type summary. All right, you have strings, integer, floats, booleans. An integer is a number without a decimal place. A float is a number with a decimal place and something after it. That's all there are. That's all, that, that's all there is, and those are the numeric types. If you're dealing with an int or a float, you can do arithmetic with it. You can do math. You cannot do math with a string type. So then there are what they call sequence types. So you have a string. We talked about that. A list. A tuple. I kind of went over the tuple, but I don't use tuples much. Make sure you, you go and understand a tuple. It's just a different kind of a sequence. A set is basically um, a set guarantees uniqueness. So you can't have the same two elements in a set. In the list, you can repeat an element as many times as you like. And then we have dictionaries, which we just talked about. So this is an additional practice for grade calculation. Um, type conversions. This is very important because you're going to be doing type conversions all of the time in this class. Why is that? That is because when I use an input, when I use the input function in Python, it always it always sends the piece of information into Python as a string. So if you're, if you're entering the number one and you want to use it as the number one, you have to convert it to an integer. Or if I'm passing in the number 10 and I want to use the number 10 as a float, I, excuse me, I have to convert it to a float. That's why this is so important that people understand it. And if I want to print an integer or a float along with other data, I have to convert it to a string. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So I'm just going to create a new file here, a new Python file, and I'm going to call it convert. So. Let's start with inputting data. Okay, I'm going to say my name input please print please enter your name. And I'm going to say my int is input Please enter an int, and then I'm going to do the same thing with a float. Okay. And then I'm just going to print these. And I'm using something that you guys are going to see a lot. So even though we haven't quite talked about format specifiers, I'm using them and we'll go through them in a bit. So 
I'm going to then do my name, my int, my float. So I'm just going to run this really quick after I set up the configuration. Convert. Okay. Very simple. I'm going to say Lisa. I'm going to say 5. I'm going to say 22.25. So I have Lisa 5.22.25. All fine and good. Well, what happens if I want to add my integer and my float? So I'm going to say result is my int plus my float. Seems reasonable. And then I'm going to print result. So let's see what happens. I'm going to enter my name. I'm going to enter an integer. And I'm going to enter a float. And you'll see that it gave me 1022.25. But that's not what 10 and 25 are when you add them together are equal to. That is because right now my int and my float are being treated as strings. So it's just going to concatenate. It's just going to butt one up against the other. So what do I do to make these actually integers and floats? So I'm going to use the int method that Python gives me to convert my int to an integer. And then I'm going to use the float conversion function to convert the float value I entered in into a float. So now let's see what happens with the same value. I'm going to Lisa, I'm going to say 10, and I'm going to say 22.25. And lo and behold, I get 32. Oh, my bad, 225, because I entered 225. So by just using those two functions, I've changed the output. And I've changed the output because I have converted in the case of my int, I've converted an integer, a, sorry, I've converted a string to an integer, and from my float, I've converted a string to a float. And you're going to be doing this all the time. So uh, let's go string formatting, which I just um, showed. Anybody typed anything into the chat? No, OK. String formatting is what you just saw. Okay, basically I want to, and in this class, we have to do some complex output. So the string formatting allows to do, me to do that without putting a lot of pluses or things like that into the mix. And it's also good, let's say I wanted to print out my float with only two decimal places. So I can do this. I can print result is, uh, what is it? It's point two f. Is that right? Oh, sorry. I just lost the syntax. Uh, all right. I just lost that syntax in my head. I really apologize for that. Okay, this is where Google comes in. Okay, this is where it happens to come in. All right, there it is, right there. My bad, because I was programming in Java today, and I was trying to type it in in Java world. So, in this case, I open the curly bracket, I do point two F and close the curly bracket. And then I'm going to say dot format my float. So if I run this again, Lisa ten twenty two point three 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 four 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 four. Whoops, I didn't do it right. Ah, uh, that's correct. 
because I have to. So what did I do? What I did was I forgot to convert it. So the error that I have here is that attribute error. Stir object has no attribute to F because my float at this point, I, I had only converted it for the plus, so I hadn't actually created another variable from it. So what I did was I was trying to say print a string with only two decimal places after it. However, you can't do that with a string in Python. So that's why I got that error. So I have now added float as a modifier. And I'm going to run it. And I'm just going to type in everything again. And and I still didn't do it. Float object has no attribute to F. Well, my bad. Oh, wait a minute. I think it's supposed to be colon. I'm sorry. This is what happens. Yeah, it's colon. This is what happens when I go between Java and Python, and I do apologize. Let's try this one more time. And if not, I throw up my hands and say it's because it's after 9 o'clock. There we go. Colon instead of... In, in Java, it's dot .2f. In Python, it's colon 2f. So I apologize. Um, but it didn't do it. All right. I will come back and correct this in the video when I put it up. I'm not going to sit here and waste more of your time. So um, let's keep going. Advanced string formatting, which is probably... Uh, this just allows you to do fixed field width if you need to. You can. Um, yeah. Yeah. So this allows you to do some more fancy formatting. This is nice to have if you want to... Um, if you want to do that for your uh, project, you can do some very nice formatting things. I'm going to try one more thing here. Dot. I just, sorry, I have to do one more thing. Okay, that was it. So the real thing is it's inside the curly braces, it's colon dot two F. So. Okay, so string slicing. String slicing is very good because you can pull a string apart and create other strings with it. Now, this is very handy when you have complex strings. Let's say I have a URL, and I want to get just a certain piece of that URL for a program that I'm writing. I can do that using this string slicing because Everything has an index. Every string character has an index. So I can get to it based on the index. Now, the string slicing is very interesting. I guess my stir 5 colon 8 will get you the thing from the fifth through the eighth element in a string, or the fourth through the seventh. That's how this is read. Starting at zero, the zero position, zero index, ending at the fourth position, create me a new string based on that grouping of letters. Uh, so it's very, very interesting. Now, there is also this. Minus two does not mean minus two from the opposite end of the string. This says to the um, from the beginning to the second to the last character. So that's how you read this. It's very handy to use if you're doing string manipulation. I know I'm going a little fast, but I want to get to the labs, especially 2.12. String methods. You can do all kinds of things with a string method, you, and um, you can replace it. You can, um, and, and always remember when you are dealing with string manipulation, you are creating a new string. So any of these methods you see 
will that will result in a new string if there's a modification. Um, find does not give you a new string because you're just asking the question, you know, is this character in the string? And if so, what's its index value? Um, you can compare strings. The comparison is with the double equal sign. Uh, we'll learn a little bit more about that next week. The double equal sign basically says, are these the same? It is checking for equivalence. While the single equal sign is doing assignment, you're setting the value of, you're setting a value into a variable. The double equal sign is asking a question. It's saying, are these two the same? Um, and you can also do less than and greater than and things like that. Again, we're going to get into uh, Boolean operators next week, and we're going to get into if statements next week. So they're talking a little about if statements here. We don't really need to worry about that except for 2.12, which I'll be going through in just a few minutes. You can split and join strings, so you can use the split method, which we'll use for 2.12. And you can join two strings together, which is very nice. So name format. So this is the one that confuses a lot of students, and that's because we've only just begun to talk about branching, but you have to use branching for lab 2.12. And my previous ex examples do, do it differently than what I'm going to show you tonight. And I normally don't give out full answers for any of the labs. I will start you on the more complicated labs. We will walk through what a lab entails. I don't give out the answers because they're requiring you to do branching, which we do not cover until next module. I do uh, work through this one completely. So this is lab. 2.12. If your teachers get upset, have them come yell at me. I've already talked to people in the school because it's not fair to ask you to do something that you haven't learned yet. So basically, I'm just going to copy this in so it's easier and as a comment so I can just refer back to it. So basically it's saying um, Basically, they want you to format a person's name. So if uh, they either want it to be last name, comma, first initial, dot, middle initial, dot, or they want it to be um, first name, last name, comma, first initial. So the problem with this is you have to, you have to know if there are, one, there are two words entered or three words entered. And that takes branching, and we haven't covered it yet. So the first thing you want to do is you want to input someone's name. So I'm going to say name is, and I'm going to do an input. So the person's going to input their name. And I want them to input either a first and last name or a first, middle, and last name. So there are two conditions in that way. There is the condition of first, middle, and last, and then the other condition, uh, actually, or, because it is mutually exclusive, first and last name. So what am I going to do? Uh, oh, wait a minute. And how are they entering it? Sorry. First name, middle name, last name. Okay. That's how they want it input. So I'm going to take in some number of words. So what I have to do is I have to say if, first of all, I need to split the, the names, I'm going to say names, names, into a list. So I'm going to say, um, oh, sorry, I'm going to say um, name list equals names dot Split. And that is going to change three different 
the, the, the two or three pieces of information I put in into a list. And then, based on the length of the list, I'm going to figure out what to do. So I'm going to say if len name list is greater than two, then I'm going to print what what's the order? So if there are three, it's I'm going to print last name, comma, whoops, my bad, I did not put quote. Sorry. I did not put a quote. Last name, comma, and it's going to be first initial dot yeah. First initial, middle initial, dot. And because I'm going backwards, I'm going to say, oh, wait a minute, did I, I got my parentheses unbalanced. There we go. Format, I'm going to say name list of two, name list of the first name, one, sorry, and I'll show you why this is doing this in a second, of zero, of zero, and name list one of zero. Otherwise, what did I do? Do I have my parentheses unbalanced? I have my parentheses unbalanced. Okay. Otherwise, I'm going to just do last name, first initial, period. So it'll be last name, first initial, period. Last name, first initial, period. So I don't need this. So I know this seems a little complex, but let's walk through it and see what happens. So I'm going to put the debugger there, and we'll see if I got this right. Okay. So I'm going to debug this. I start at the input statement. I'm going to go to the console, and I'm going to say Shannon Lisa, Ann. And now I'm going to step over. Oops. And I'm going to go back here to the debugger. So my name list is not yet defined. My names are Shannon, Lisa, Ann. So I'm going to step over. And you will see that my name list is now populated. Shannon, Lisa, Ann. So that is what the split did. It took and it said, wherever there's a space, stop it and create a list. So now I have a list with three elements. So I can use the len against the list to say, are there more than two elements? Because if there are three elements, then I have to do one print statement. And if there are two elements, I have to do a different print statement. So in this case, I'm going to do the last name, okay, which is zero. You'll see, by the way, when you see these arrows in PyCharm with a list, you can actually open them up and it will show you the indexes and the length because those are the properties. Now, because string is also an index, I can get at each individual character in the string. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to step over and I go exactly to where I think I need to go and I should print out, whoops, oops, I did that wrong. So what did I do wrong? Two. Zero, one, two. What did I do? Ann, SL. Well, the format's correct, but the things are wrong. So I did Shannon, Lisa, Ann. So zero, one, two. That should have been Shannon. Why was that Ann? Oh, because I typed it in wrong. 
Is that right? I, I think I just misread the... All right, so first name, middle name, last name. That's why I typed it in wrong. So let's run this, and we'll see if I can do it right. And now I get Shannon L.A. So now I'm going to debug it, with, but I'm only going to put two things in. I'm going to put in step over. I'm going to put in Lisa Shannon. So my split is going to take place. So Python's going to give me back a list from the input. And if I look in the debugger, my name list has Lisa Shannon in it. So the length is going to be 2, so it's not going to be greater than 2. So I'm going to end up down here, and I'm going to print out. Did I make a mistake? I did. Ah. Uh, so here, I made a very bad mistake. I said I have two elements in the list, so I used two. So in this case, I'm going to use one because I don't have the right number. I, I, I copied wrong. So if I do it again and I type, I get Shannon L. So this is the solution to 2.12, and it's the only solution I'm going to give you all term. So let's go on and talk about the rest of them. So lab 2.13 is about counting characters. So basically it says write a program that you're going to take in a string that contains a character and a phrase, and you're going to output the number of times the character appears in the phrase. So this tells me that potentially you're looking to find something. So let's go out and look at Python find. So here are built-in types, documentation, Python string find. I like W3Schools. So it's got a definition of what find does. So it returns the first occurrence, returns minus one is the value isn't found, and the method, well, so maybe this isn't right. Maybe we don't want to find it. Maybe we want to count it. And I'm kind of going through this so you guys can understand the thought process associated. String count. So let's see what string count does. Well, so I love apples. Apples are my favorite. So X, text count apple. So how many times did the word apple appear in that text? Sounds to me like I want to count for this. So in this case, I will want to count the number of ends in Monday. So if we go back and look, where did it say string formatting, string string methods? So if we go back to 210, let's see if there's a count here. Oops, count. All right. So those aren't the counts. This is the count I want right here. Returns the number of times x occurs in the string. So my stir dot count. So that's the format. So whatever your variable name is, dot count, and then the information that came in. So if I am looking at, sorry, 2.13, there are two things I'm going to do here. I'm going to have an input, and that input is going to be two things. Just like I had last name, first name in 2.12, I am going to have a character and a word. And I'm going to have to split those two into a list. 
and then the first element of the list, so it will be whatever the list is, of zero. Um, sorry, whatever the last element in the list is, you're going to want to use the count method and use the first element. So I'm looking for this, so that is the argument to count, and I'm looking for it in this. So it's going to be whatever that last element in the list is, dot count. So did I, is that, is that clear or does any, did I make that confusing? Okay. Creating passwords. So this one is all about formatting. So when I was talking about formatting earlier and the format specifiers, this is what you want to do. So you're going to enter three different inputs. You're going to enter two words and a number. And then you're going to format it differently. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to print out, you entered, quote, yellow daisy six. So if I go back and I look at 2.12, you will see that I have these open, closed curly brackets. And it's a little confusing because I said dictionaries use these curly brackets. Format specifiers also use the curly brackets. And then I'm going to give it a piece of information. I'm going to give it a variable. And it's going to just take this piece of information, because it's positional, this piece of information, and put it where these curly brackets are. So that's all that this is. Um, that's all that this is doing. It's just a replace. That's all that that curly bracket means. It says, in a print statement, if I'm using the format method, this curly brace is just holding a piece of space. And I want it replaced with whatever the value is here. That could be a literal value. It could be a variable. So that's all this one is doing. It is simply taking those and using print with the curly braces dot format to print it different ways. And that is it for module two. Does anybody have any questions before I call the class? Okay. Um, any of my students, please feel free to reach out. I will hopefully have all this up on my YouTube channel tomorrow. Everybody have a good evening. I'm going to stop sharing and stop the recording.